Hey guys, this is Clinton from Grimspeed, and I am very excited to be walking you through the installation of the Grimspeed JB400 and BB500 turbochargers for the 02 to 07 WRX and 04 to 21 STI platforms. This install procedure is advanced and should only be attempted if you are 100% comfortable with performing the job. These instructions are provided as a guide only, as there are many variables that cannot be accounted for concerning your particular vehicle. If you run into any issues during your install, please feel free to reach out to our in-house customer service team, who will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Before starting the turbo installation, perform a standard oil change. The first step in the process is going to be removing either your top mount intercooler or your front mount intercooler piping. In our 2020 STI, we are running a front mount intercooler, so we are going to remove the top left section of piping. If you are running a top mount intercooler, you will need to remove the brackets as well. You will also need to remove your OEM turbo heat shield. In our case, we are running a Grimspeed turbo heat shield, but they come off the same way. Once you have removed the heat shield, it's time to loosen the turbo downpipe bolts. There are five bolts on the downpipe flange. Three are accessed in the engine bay, and two are accessed from the underside of the car. These bolts are typically pretty tight, so if you need to use some kind of penetrant to get them off, feel free. Now it's time to get underneath the car. If you're fortunate enough to have a lift, this part should be easy. Find your O2 sensor plug and unclip it. Route it over the subframe bracket and let it hang. Now loosen the two flange bolts connecting the down pipe to the mid pipe. Also remove the downpipe hanger bolt. If you haven't done so already, you can remove the two remaining downpipe bolts. Now we need to tackle the oil return hose clamp. This can be a difficult one to reach, but all that needs to be done is to slide the clamp up onto the hose. Pull your down pipe and place it aside. Now lower the car back down to the ground so we can work in the engine bay. Locate the oil feed hard line, loosen the connection and remove it. Now we need to loosen the clamp on the turbo coolant hose. In order to save ourselves from making a mess, place a rag underneath the coolant hose before you take it off. This is a pretty tight area, so use a needle nose pliers to grab the clamp and slide it down. Once the hose is removed, find something to cap it off. In this case, we used a battery.
Now find your coolant reservoir and remove the cap. We need to remove the hose running between the reservoir and the turbo. Place a rag underneath the hose and slide the clamp down. Then remove the hose from the reservoir. Now we can loosen the compressor inlet worm clamp. Use an 8mm socket to loosen the worm clamp. Remove the small air line on the compressor nipple. Also remove the air line from the turbo actuator. Now loosen the three bolts on the turbo up pipe flange. With all of those loose, you should be able to lift the turbo up and out of the engine bay. Find a clean surface and start removing the red protective caps from the turbo. Remove the OEM oil drain hose from your old turbo and place it onto your new Grimspeed turbo. Find this bolt that holds the turbo inlet onto the intake manifold. Using an Allen wrench, remove it. We need to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room in order to make seating the turbo a little bit easier. Pull back and separate the inlet from the manifold. Then find a half inch extension and wedge it between the two. Now this next part can easily be seen as the hardest part of the install. We need to line up the oil drain hose while also lining up the compressor inlet. In order to get the correct clearance, you may find it necessary to bend your oil feed hard line. The easiest way to do this is to use a closed end wrench and gently bend the oil feed hard line towards the frame rail. No need to overdo it as it only needs a slight adjustment. Before dropping in your turbo, be sure to replace the turbo up pipe gasket that's included in your kit. Find the included NPT oil line adapter and thread it onto the oil line. Now, find the included braided oil line and thread it onto the adapter. We're now ready to drop the turbo into place. Take your time and get everything lined up. Like I said before, this part can be a little bit tricky, so take your time. You can use a screwdriver or a pick of some sort to try and pull the rubber inlet over the compressor inlet. But be careful, the last thing you want to do is puncture a hole in the rubber inlet. Once you have ensured that the turbo inlet is on the compressor and the oil drain hose is connected, Pull the spacer that you use between the intake manifold and the turbo inlet. This should give you the space that you need in order to further press the turbo into the inlet to ensure you have a strong connection. Now you can re-thread and tighten the mounting bolt that you took out. Now firmly press the turbo into the turbo inlet and tighten the worm clamp.
At this point in the install, we can bolt the turbo back up to the up pipe. Take your three nuts and thread them onto the up pipe studs. Using a socket and extension, tighten them down and torque them to spec. Next, let's install the water lines. Be sure that when installing the water line, you place the washers like shown here. It's important that when installing this water line, it does not come in contact with the compressor housing. You can follow the same procedure for the other water line. Now we need to prime the turbo. Pull 10 to 20 milliliters of fresh engine oil into the included syringe. While spinning the impeller wheel, inject oil into the turbo's top oil port. This will coat the turbo's bearings, ensuring that no damage is done on first startup. Now find the oil feed banjo fitting and thread it into the braided oil line. Place the washers in the correct orientation, then thread the banjo fitting into the turbo. On your old turbo, remove the hose that ran between the water feed line and the coolant reservoir. In the same orientation, install this hose onto the new turbo. Find this hose and this fitting that are included in your kit to extend your BCS connections. Push the fitting into the hose so it looks like this. Find port 2 on your BCS, the line that goes to the actuator, and press in the extension. Then run the line to the actuator. Now find the boost reference hose, port 3 on the BCS, and plug that into the nipple on the compressor. Zip tie all connections to ensure they don't come off. Now it's time to reinstall the downpipe. Your kit includes a new turbo downpipe gasket. Install the new gasket onto the turbo flange. Mount up the downpipe and thread on the bolts. Torque the downpipe bolts to the correct specifications. Find and unplug the crank position sensor. Crank the engine five times for 15 seconds. With the sensor unplugged, the car will not start. Doing this circulates oil through the turbo. After the fifth cycle, you can plug the sensor back in. Reinstall your intercooler piping and tighten everything back up.
Also, if you lost any coolant during the install process, be sure to top it off. Start the engine and let it run for 5 to 10 minutes, checking for any oil leaks, coolant leaks, or excessive smoking. 